everyone, it's John from What Up, and welcome back to another video. Now, it's been a little bit since I've done a news video. However, we have two very exciting pieces of news to you today. They're coming cur courtesy of Red Indian Intelligence. It's a website, and I've left the link down below in the description box. They mainly deal with Witcher news. However, they have broken a ton of Wheel of Time related stories as well, uh, and there's no reason not to doubt anything they put out. Now we're going to talk about both pieces of news. The first one is audition tapes for the role of Leona. Now Leona, we believe, is for Leandrin, uh, which, as most of you know, Kate Fleetwood actually got the role, and we know that she's cast as Leandrin said I. Um, but these are callback tapes, so these are people reading for the role. Now there's three tapes that cover about five scenes, and we're going to go through them in today's video. Also, Red Indian Intelligence leaked a new cast member. So we do have another cast member that's been leaked by them, and so far they've been right with pretty much everything they've leaked, so there's no reason to doubt this one as well. We'll get into that new cast member where I think they fit into the story later on in the video. All right, before we get started though, spoiler warning, in this video we will be discussing the audition tapes, the callbacks for Leona, as well as a new cast member. So if you have not read at least The Eye of the World and The Great Hunt, be forewarned, I may spoil specific scenes, plot lines, or characters from those two books. All right, with that out of the way, let's get on to the video. All right, so there's two links in the description box. The first one is for the original Red Anion Intelligence article for these leaks as well as the character. Uh, it's a really good read. You want to click that at some point and go read it. it it's, it's, you know, they've leaked a lot of stuff and they're usually right. Um, and the other article I've linked down below is the Wheel of Time Series.com article for these leaked edition tapes and the new character. Now, they do a really great analysis of the edition tapes and they break it down, so it's it's really nice to see that. And I do want to thank both WheelTimeSeries.com and Red Indian Intelligence. Without websites like these, with their dedicated team of writers and sleuths, um, doing my job or my hobby, I guess you would say, would be much more difficult. Uh, I don't think I would get half the news I actually get without people like this. So thank you so much for doing this. Um, I enjoy seeing it as a fan and I really do enjoy reporting on it as well. All right, so uh, one more little warning before we start. We're going to talk about certain scenes from these audition tapes. Uh, there's five scenes we're going to go through. They may not make it into the show. They may be written solely for the purpose of callbacks and auditions, so it doesn't mean that the things that are written here or we discuss today will end up in the show, and it doesn't mean that these are going to be wide-sweeping changes that we're going to see. Uh, it's possible, um, but we don't know for sure. Also, a bunch of the names in these audition tapes are changed, likely to protect the real names of the characters for people who are doing the callbacks. Um, now, some of these names seem to match other names from other callback tapes that we've witnessed over the last few months. Uh, so it's quite possible that we're getting our guesses right on who is who. But again, we could be wrong. So take this with a, with a big grain of salt, just in case. Um, but if we are right, again, we're probably going to spoil a bunch of stuff. So you've been warned. <laughs> All right, so these audition tapes were posted, and as of this morning when I checked, they seem to have been taken down, so they're no longer online, at least in the original links. That does not mean that you can't find them elsewhere, um, but be careful about sharing them because they were taken down for a reason. Now, let's get into these scenes. There's five of them. The first scene is a very short one. It appears to be between Leona and Myera. Now, Myera we think is Moraine, um, and Leona we believe is Leandrin. This, essentially, it's just a very short scene with Moraine showing up, talking to Leandrin, and Leandrin is, well, you're too late if you've come to help. And she's like, too late for what? And they talk about uh, the Nagari born They've already captured him. Um, and the Nagari born again, we believe, is the Dragon Reborn. So this is kind of a neat scene insofar as we didn't believe Moraine was super involved in the capture of Loghain at all uh, because she was hunting for the Two Rivers folk. Um, but if she's there in the show, that would bring a whole new aspect to this. We get to see some things a lot earlier than we would in the books, uh, which is pretty neat. Um, and again, we don't get to see the capture uh, of Loghain in the series. We don't get to see his travels to Tarvalon. Uh, we basically see him first in the eye of the world, in a cage, surrounded by Aes Sedai, and then again he shows up in the Tower Gardens uh, later on in the series, already gentled and a broken man at that point. So we don't get to see any of the in-between, the trial, things like that, which I really kind of do hope we get to see in the show, because it would help explain so much to the viewers that people who read the books... Uh, basically would have had to read to get uh, further on. So you're getting information earlier, but it's good when you're watching a show because it lets you visually see certain things and it keeps you from having information overload if they all jam it into you at once when you need to know it. All right, scene two, it's a little bit longer. This one seems to be between Leandra and another Aes Sedai. Uh, both have been involved in Loghain's capture. Um, so they're talking about that and Leandra essentially says that we should just slit his throat and be done with them. So that's the big takeaway from this scene for me. It showcases 
two things. Uh, the brutality of the Reds when they're capturing men who can channel, um, and it lets the viewers see that, and it also showcases how really truly evil this lady is. Um, in the book series, she's not nice, and she's not a super good character, but you don't really see how evil she is until a little bit later when she when she betrays the girls, um, Nynaeve and Egwene. So when that happens, it's bad. But until then, you're kind of, yeah, yeah, you know, she's she's not great, but there's a little bit of evil involved there, but not too much. This is straight out. Let's just slit our captive's throat, which is bad. So I think they're going to showcase how evil and bad she is a little bit earlier. And I think they may even use her as a proxy for some of the Forsaken. Now, you can't 100% quote me on that because it may not happen, but... It seems to be that they're building her up a little bit more than they would have built her up in the books. Maybe she'll take the place of a Forsaken or two, or at least a big bad in the first season. It's possible. Now, the third scene is another short scene. This being, seems to be between Leona and Nady. Now, Nady, from a previous audition tape, seems to be Nynaeve. Now, this is basically Leona talking to Nynaeve, and Nynaeve saying she doesn't trust the Aes Sedai, doesn't trust these witches, uh, which is pretty much her character at first in the books, uh, even though she can channel one power and is going for training. Yeah, she doesn't trust Tarvalon, doesn't trust I Stai, doesn't trust One Power, doesn't trust anything at all. Uh, so this, this showcases that, and it's kind of a neat scene. Scene four. Now, this one we have a few different people. So there's a second person and a third person she's talking to. And it's hard to tell which ones they are when you watch it, but it could be Nynaeve or Gwaine, I believe, from the dialogue. And, you know, the analysis from WheelTimeSeries.com, Red Onion as well, seems to pretty much support that. Now, there's quite a bit of you know, talking in the dialogue about different things that doesn't make any sense if you use the real names. So, if you if you kind of change uh, the Dretch Wars, it could be the Trolloc Wars. If you change um, your temple, that could be the White Tower. So they're using code names for a lot of different things here, but essentially this scene is just an explanation of the White Tower, its Ajas, how they work, and, and what the women who are involved in them mean and what they do, uh, which again would be a very, very good scene to have in the series because you need the viewers to know as much about the White Tower as early as possible because you need to build up the fact that they are a, you know, they're a force to be reckoned with within, within the world and they are organized and it's not just a bunch of uh, people coming together occasionally to do things. So there's that. Now, the fifth scene seems to be uh, on the way to Tarvalon. Now, it's Leona, which is Leandrin, speaking with another Aes Sedai, uh, and they're kind of talking about uh, Loghain and how he's going to stand trial when he gets back to the White Tower. Now, there are some things here. They talk about the Stone Tower, or the, sorry, the Temple. Uh, they talk about um, different things. They don't say Loghain. They don't say the Dragon Reborn. They don't say the White Tower, but we can, we can kind of guess from, you know, the dialogue what they're talking about. Now, this is another scene where they showcase the brutality of the Red Aja, and specifically the Andrum, where she's basically lobbying to have him gentled on the spot and talking about how she doesn't like Moraine at all, Myera. Now, this gives us a couple of different things. So, again, they're probably building her up to be a bad guy in the first season or second season if any of these audition tapes are believed or are going to show up in the show itself. Um... Maybe possibly taking the place of Forsaken. It's it's possible. We haven't seen any big bad castings yet, except for Pat and Thane and, and Leandrin, really. Um, and maybe the White Cloaks, if you count them as the big bads. Uh, but we haven't seen any of the Chosen or Forsaken at all. So maybe, just maybe, they're taking Leandrin and they're making her have a bigger role. Uh, it kind of seems that way here because she's involved in the capturing of Loghain, which we know is an expanded storyline, at least according to these callbacks. Something else interesting from this is the fact that Moraine is there. She's on the way to Tarvalon with Loghain. Now, this causes some problems for a couple of different reasons. First, the timelines don't make any sense at all if you're to follow the books, because she was not involved in his capture, she was not involved in taking him to Tarvalon or his trial or anything at all like that. Uh, she basically heard about it from afar like everyone else. Now, what does that mean? It, well, does it mean that this happens prior to... The Ammon Fielders, you know, being picked up by Moraine, does it happen afterwards? If this scene makes it in the series, it raises a lot of questions for timelines and how they're going to work things, but it does make 100% sense to have someone like Moraine, a big A-list actress, um, who is 
has been billed as the female lead of the show, really, uh, involved in such a big storyline here, maybe uh, on her way down or while they're separated. So either on the way down to the two rivers or while they're separated, she helps out a little bit, travels to Tarvalon for a bit while looking for Egwene, Perrin, Matt, Rand, after they're all separated at Shader Logoth. That's possible. Um, I don't know. I don't know how likely it is. That, that's what I think is probably happening there. But something else i really like to see is now you're seeing animosity between Aes Sedai and the Ajas, which is something else we really don't get a whole lot of in the first couple of books. It comes much later. But if we see it earlier, it lets us see the White Tower as more of um, you know, an entity in the series. It gives it a little bit more reality. All right. That's all we have for the, the scenes. Now we're going to get into the actual leaked character casting. All right, so now we're going to talk about the leaked cast member, Michael DeCruz. Now, Michael DeCruz has been acting since 1989, and you may have seen him in either EastEnders, which IMDb incorrectly puts it at 85. No, it was in 2002. He was a clerk in that, or in the movie Tyrant. Now, he has a history of playing supporting roles or smaller roles. Uh, he is an actor, a director, and an acting coach as well. So he has a lot of experience in not only acting but teaching others how to act as well which is really nice now one of the things we do know about michael is that he has yet to film so his cv does say filming soon or coming like it's going to be filming soon uh project in development it doesn't say he's actually filmed it yet so that puts him either in the fourth block which is episode seven or eight or both uh or in season two because we do know for a fact that they can cast ahead of time for the season two, three, four, whatever they want. It does not necessarily mean that these characters will show up in the first season. Now, now my favorite part is the speculation. Who can he play? Now, if you think about a few different things, there are a multitude of fan theories. The first and foremost being that he is a Borderlander because he has to show up in season or episode seven or eight of season one. So he's going to be a Borderlander, and he kind of, you know, would fit the look of someone who uh, is a warrior as well, kind of you know, hard-looking uh, and muscular. Now, do I think he's a borderlander? I'm not entirely sure. People have said Huron. It's possible that he's Huron, or he's an amalgam of Huron and Julian Sandar. That's a very big rumor, or I wouldn't say rumor, a fan theory right now. Um, do I believe that one? It's it's entirely possible. Um, there's another one, and this is a really great one. I like this theory. This one comes from Geeky Airy. Uh, she writes for WheelOfTimeSeries.com, and she's also a, a big sleuth on Twitter of time. I've left a link to her Twitter down below if you want to follow her. She always puts out all kinds of great content. And this is what she mentioned, Zerid Elbar. Now, Zerid Elbar is a Son Sh Sean Chan guard loyal to High Lady Suroth. Now, this is a little bit difficult. Does he have the look? Uh, hook nose and was tall and dark? Yes. He has the look of the character, although uh, we've already seen that um, that is not entirely what Amazon goes for. They go more for uh, acting ability and how they would fit the role. Um, but he could fit this particular role. And he was there when they captured Egwene. So, is it possible that they're doing more than the first season of the first book? Now, this has been a very big hot-button topic for, for a long time. I was originally in the two books, one season camp. Then I was like, yeah, a book and a half. And then Matt from The Dusty Wheel and Rebecca from Reading the Pattern, she also works for Dragon Mount, convinced me that no, one season, one book with a little bit of New Spring and some expanded stuff. Uh, and now I'm kind of back on the maybe a little bit more than just the eye of the world in the first season. I mean, we do have eight hours, potentially more, um, if they're doing eight episodes. We don't know what the last two episode titles are or you know, what they're covering or where they're at. There are some filming locations right now that are speculated to be uh, for season or for episode seven and eight that look like the blight. So maybe, maybe we won't see him as Zeri Elbar initially, but I really like this theory. I like the fact that this gentleman really fits the fact that, you know, this character. Now, also, you have to understand too, the character's name that he's cast as is Zephyr, so it's it's not a character name from the books. The closest that me and Geeky Eri kind of look, come up to is this one here, Zeri Elbar. So if they're keeping a code word for this and that he's not actually playing a character called Zephyr, maybe he is playing this particular character. I really do like this. I, I like this a lot. This is, this is a very good theory, at least for me. Um... Now, that, again, I can't take credit for this one. This is Geeky Aries Theory, and I do like it a lot, though. So, so far, we have the biggest theories being that he's Huron and Julian Sander or just some Borderlander. Um, second theory is that he's playing Zerid Elbar, which I like a lot because I think Egwene being captured would be the perfect end to the first season. You know, bracelet goes around her neck and 
fade to black type thing. That would be really cool. Will we get that far? I, I don't truly think we will, but it's, it's a neat thought. And then we have my theory. Now, we have yet to see a single Chosen, and I've speculated a couple of times in the past that other characters are going to take up double duty. Uh, so, Miss Grinwell, I thought, would be a really good Masana. I think she would play that character very, very well. She would go to the Tower instead of else. She would integrate herself as a servant. She would, you know, become Masana in the Tower, like in the books, like the spider in the shadows pulling strings. I thought that was a really great theory. It found it at all? No, not 100%. It's just me spitballing. But we don't have any cast to Chosen yet. He would be a really good pick for Agonor, I think, personally. Now, there's a whole lot of speculation on what they're going to do at the end of the Eye of the World. Are they going to have the two Forsaken show up for the fight at the Eye of the World? Will they only have one? Will Rand even fight Balazimon at all? We don't know for sure, because we're not entirely sure how they're handling any of the bad guys. We haven't seen any of the castings yet at all. But I think he would be a very, very good Forsaken. If you go back and look at his body of work, some of the things he's played and done, he could play that character very well, I believe. That's, that's my thoughts on that anyway. So, uh, thank you so much for sticking with me here to the very end. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What do you think of the five scenes from the leaked audition tapes? Uh, do you think they'll be in the show? Do you think that maybe they won't be included and they are made up completely just like the names were in them? Um, or do you think that we might see parts of them? Is it giving us a hint that maybe Moraine is involved in the capture of Loghain and we're seeing a much bigger expanded storyline of him? It's possible. And let me know what you think of the theories I have on uh, Michael DeCruz here. Now, is he is he going to be Julian Sandar and Huron amalgamated? Will he be Zephyr as those two put together? Will he be a random borderlander? Uh, will he be possibly Inkar? I mean, I've heard that one as well. Uh, could he be... Like we said earlier, and I have to look down for this, Zeri Delbar. Could he be Zeri Delbar? Uh, or could he be uh, one of the Forsaken? Uh, Agonor is, is my, my pick for that one. We're not entirely sure, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, and also, let me know what you think of the video and, and how you like it here. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Just a simple click of a button, turn that notification bell on. I usually put out two or three videos a week based on news and times and things like that. Uh, I am back to work where I'm at now, so I'm putting out less videos, uh, although I'm still trying to put out at least one a week. So there's that. All right. Thank you so much for sticking with me here to the very end. And here's to many more.